Hello, it's Kim Murden with a Good Herb Wife podcast. And today I thought I'd take the opportunity to speak and explore winter. I'm recording this just after the solstice and before the new year. And I know I'm often talking about things like being grounded and connected with the seasons and the cycle of life. And what does that mean? Well, for one, I'm just going to quickly reference the poets, the farmer poet, Wendell Berry. And in one of his poems, he says, I stand for what I stand upon. Now, what that speaks to me about is, you know, being on and of the earth. And as a herbalist, uh, I, I consider it's really so beneficial the more congruent we are with our animal nature the better we find ourselves resourced the better orientated we become and the less dismantled disconnected um we you know or lost we become I mean don't that we don't overprivilege their you know the mental stress and strain and anxiety so what do I what am I really meaning by all this when I say let's explore winter well number one let's think about the actual qualities of winter so you'll have your own personal you know historical memories about winter experiences for you for yourself but what about what it does impact us as animals so the light you know the the quality of the light changes the days are shorter the temperatures fluctuate and could be a lot colder you know there can be long gray days there can be wet there can be wind so on that light level for example you know the the little glands that we have on our head the pituitary and the hypothalamus that then speak to all the rest of our endocrine system respond to those light levels and thereby change our metabolism you know our metabolic needs and so that you know the hunger levels and the temperature levels change Historically, of course, our our ancestors, our human ancestors, lived thousands, hundreds of thousands of years without any electric light. Uh, it's only what been in the last hundred or so years that we've had this constant twenty four hour cycling. Um, so you know, our natural state really is to to respond to that lack of light levels by resting more, not being so active in the day, you know, in the nighttime hours, I should say. So what that gives us an opportunity to connect back into is where we should maybe dream a bit more, rest a bit more, restore ourselves a bit more. And if we take an observational, a connected um um, immersion in the in the winter landscape. What do we see around us? Uh, we you know we see the trees. I'm looking at the trees out here. There's no leaves on there. They've fallen to, to the ground in their dead state and they're decaying. They're making new soil, um, that precious of most precious of commodities. There's a few things that are evergreen. Uh, for example, the ivy that's got berries on it that the birds are eating. Whilst other things have died right back, and there's the, the resting, the rootstock may be resting. Um, you know, even then, things that I will go out and harvest certain things. There's the valerian root, which I've got up until about February to go and and um, harvest that. Whereas other things, they're you know not in an active state at all, and. And then we, you know, what, what's the wildlife doing? You know, the wildlife is there. I'm, I observe how the winter birds just around the solstice, their songs start to get more uh, vocal. You know, they're starting to pace out their territorial ground, connecting with their, you know, their breeding regime. So they start to slowly become more enlivened for the spring um, activity. But as humans, you know, those limitate, you know, observing those limitations are a good teacher for us. And that these limitations, you know, we can't have this rest phase without, you know, it's everything that's gone behind. We've had the fruiting of autumn. We've had the great flowering of the summer. And likewise, you know, the, the previous spring with all its 
abundant energy and growth. And again, you know, the winter will roll round and feed all that needs to happen in the spring. So rather than this rather mechanistic modern way of seeing the year as linear and progress as linear, what nature gives us is that cycle, that, that wheel of life. And I would suggest, really would suggest, the more we connect with that and understand, you know, where we are within that cycle, we become you know, better orientated, better resourced um, and better equipped to meet the flavour of our days. And it's really about being congruent, really, and... Um, I often when I'm working with people one to one or in in in, a, in workshop groups or even in just in you know conversation with others you know what I'm looking for is where where is their congruence where's the authenticity where's the talk to life experience you know rather than our herd mentality thinking where we spout the slogan speech as it were you know which is you know, we all do it, but it's lazy. You know, where's the real talk to life experience? And I would suggest those of us that can find that integration, we find better orientations and tools to tackle and address, you know, whatever life issues come along. It doesn't mean they're always it's going to be magically easier. No, it means we um, have a, an understanding and the capacity to navigate things better, I would suggest. So I would say enjoy the winter. You know, use work with its qualities, work with that rest, work with that restoration, work with that time to have reflection and discard what no longer serves you, whatever capacity that is, in order to plan, you know, where we can plan for our spring ahead, you know, whether it's practical work plans or creative plans, it doesn't matter, you know, it's just use that as a sign signpost and to get out, to get out and experience it's the elemental nature of it. You know, it's quite good to get cold and wet, you know, especially if you're fortunate enough to be able to come home you know, and be warm and dry is a different matter. So, yeah, go and observe, you know, what is nature doing? What is it let go of? What is it resting with? You know, there's other curios curiosities. There's certain flowers that do come out at this time of year to give some sparse food to the um, bumbles that might venture out on a day that's warm enough. And um, there's other things that are full of seed crops, you know, the ivy. The holly berries, the birds will feast on those. And so, yeah, embed yourself in that. And being a Sussex resident, I'd say also, why not go and check the soil beneath your feet? In Sussex, we've got a bit of a thing about mud. So if you're not up on the chalky hills that are behind me over there, um, the rest of the county is renowned for lots of mud, clay mud. Um, I think we're up to about, there's about 30 words or so for mud in the, um, in Sussex. And again, I, I'm going to bring that up because it's about embedding ourselves in descriptive words that, dis, that orientate us even more with what's around us. And it talks to our ancestry, our farming ancestry, who had lots of well, you know, the Anglo-Saxons were great about naming lots of things. Or you can go and read a book, um, books like Robert McFarlane. He's great at collecting all the words of the land, um, not just the Anglo-Saxon ones. And how it really brings us into understanding that we're animals of the landscape. And that if that is a resource or, it should, you know, I call it a resource very much so, because then we're not over privileging the, you know, the binary, the digital media world, we're coming into being and understanding where things grow and where things decay and where we're limited. And it's important we understand that cycling, that life, death, rebirth cycling, because that's going to then orientate us very much in our own being as well. And 
it helps the agitation drop away. Um, so yes, on that final note of mud, I just thought I'd read a few of them out because perhaps some of you don't quite believe me. So there's words like kledgy and pug and slob and slubby, buttery, kludgy, stoked and stooched and um, swank. And I think the spaniel, I think spaniel's the special type of mud that you bring into the house after New Year. So um, I wish you some spaniel mud, I think. So thanks for listening and um, look forward to talking to you again. And enjoy, enjoy what the winter can teach us. Bye. Thank you.